All right, listen to me very closely because life for the top 1% of men is better than it has ever been. And for the other 99% of men, it is more depressing than it has ever been. Because you see, contrary to what they tell you in the media, life for a man is actually quite hard. It's a video game where you start right at the beginning at level zero and every single day you have to work to level up. You see, because if you don't, some other guy will and that guy will take the money that could have been yours, the life that could have been yours. And this is going to be very, very, very difficult for you to hear right now, but even the wife that could have been yours. And I really want you to let that sink in. I want you to imagine right now your dream woman. What is she like? look like? How does she carry herself? What kind of an incredible mother is she to your future children? How proud are you to have her by your side? You have that image in your mind? Okay, cool. Now I want you to imagine her with another guy. Make it graphic, make it sting, make it hurt. Because you just lost your future wife, the future mother of your children to another man because you decided you're going to around with some video games while the other guy every single day put one foot forward in front of the other and leveled up and left you behind. That is the cold, harsh reality for men. It is competition 24 seven. There is no rest. And that is precisely why you need to become a high value man. Now, there is a big misconception as to what is actually a high value man. And that's because most of the guys that you watch online either don't know what it actually means to be a high value man or simply have not been in the trenches long enough. You cannot be in the trenches for two years and think that you're going to be a high value man. And we'll get onto that in just a second. I'm going to share with you guys five things in this video and all five need to be true for you to call yourself a high value man. This is not easy. This is not a thing that you're going to get done in the next three weeks or six months. This is a commitment. But what other option do you have? Now, the first step in order to become a high value man, and this is really where I see past the facade of a lot of the manosphere community, a lot of the red pill community, a lot of you know what used to be the pickup community. The first step is you need to remove any crutches. Let me make something clear. You should be rich. You should have a good body. You should have abundance with women. But if you use those as crutches, well, then you simply can't be high value. You know, everyone thinks that they're going to get a six pack and then, you know, all of a sudden here you are high value or they think they're going to get rich. I see this a lot as well. You know, they think, well, once I'm rich, I'm a high value man. No, you're not. Because you need to understand, especially when you're dealing with a certain caliber of guy or a certain caliber of girl, it's a commodity. Everyone has a good body. Everyone's rich. It's expected to even just get into the room. It's a prerequisite. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been uploading publicly on YouTube for seven years. You can go back to me at 15 years old when I was doing all the things right. I was meditating every single day. I was reading a book a week. I've been doing this self-improvement stuff for as long as I can remember publicly on YouTube longer than anyone else I know and documenting it. And I only felt high value maybe two years ago, 18 months ago. I mean, imagine that I was 19 years old and here I was multimillionaire, the girls, the travel, the good body, social status, you know, everything, you name it. I had it, but I still knew I wasn't a high value man. I still knew I wasn't that guy. You know, I look like that guy, but I wasn't that guy deep down because I didn't face the boy. I was still a little boy because I didn't face my insecurities. I may have been the man, but I didn't feel like the man. At the end of the day, if everything else gets stripped around you and the only thing that's left is you as a person, if you would feel naked, if you would feel exposed, well, then these are simply crutches and you're not that guy yet. And that is why I don't believe from scratch you can become a high value man. It's at least a five year journey because first you work and you accomplish and you strive and you conquer and you do all these things that from the outside make you look like the man, but then you actually need to become that guy. And you will know deep down in your heart of hearts when you've accomplished it. And that leads us into the next way to become a high value man. In order to become a high value man, you must reimagine the timeline. You see, most of you guys think that you're going to become a high value man within one or two years, and it's simply not going to happen. I've never seen it happen in less than five years because there's so much internal work that goes along with it. As I mentioned, first you do, and then you become. Every time someone gets success, they then need to fully integrate into that that identity and into that success. For me, it took seven years from the age of 14 when I really started my self-development journey all the way up until basically my 21st birthday. That's really where I start to feel like, OK, I don't feel like I have anything to prove. I feel like a high value man because of who I am, right? Because of my abilities, because of my capabilities, not because of the things I have around me. And it's very hard to explain, but you just look in a guy's eye. It's the demeanor. It's the way he carries himself, how self-assured he is. It's just it's hard to describe. You just know you can see it. So for me personally, as I said, it took seven years for you and my take five years, 10 years, 15 years. But what is your other option? It is a long, long, long process.
process. But as I said, what's your other option? Because there is a guy right now who is robbing you of your future life because you simply refuse to face your insecurities, your past traumas, all the things that most people don't really talk about. But all the reasons why when you hang out with influential guys, you hang out with girls, they'll be able to read through you. They'll, they'll be able to see even though you, you look like you're the man, you're just a little boy. And until you work on that, you're never going to be able to attract the people that you want in your life. Now, the third thing you need to do in order to become a high value man is have ultimate true freedom. So that means financial freedom, location freedom, and time freedom. Listen to me, I would rather make $100,000 a year and be able to live anywhere in the world, be able to work remotely and be able to build the systems and processes. So that way I have a great team who takes care of it. There's no such thing as passive income. Don't let anyone tell you that, oh, it's just passive income. You just set it and forget it. No, everything breaks down. You know, just like a car, just like the things in your house. When you have things in your life that are tested, that you put volume through, let's say that's even your shoulder, you know, with enough time and not taking care of it, it can blow out, right? It's the exact same thing with your business. Don't think that you can just build something and then just set it and forget it. And it's just going to spit out money and never break. So there's no such thing as passive income, but there is leveraged income using leverage in order to find the right people in order to find the right solutions to actually deliver the service or the product or whatever it is that you're doing. So I would much rather make $100,000 a year and have location and time freedom than make a million dollars or hell even $3 million and be stuck in one city and have someone tell me, hey, at this time you come to office at this time, you have to leave. You don't have a say in when you get to go to the gym, when you get to hang out with your friends. Oh, you go out on a really fun trip with your friends. Too bad you already use your vacation days for the year. And the funny thing is when I say this, people think like off his jobs, right? But they're forgetting about the footballers. They're forgetting about the actors. They're forgetting about all the famous people they look up to and think, oh, they have freedom. Well, they don't. They had a team, they had a manager, they had people in their corner telling them, look, we haven't made enough money this year. We haven't sold enough tickets this year. And you know, I've talked about this stuff a lot, so I really don't want to hammer the point home any further. So just remember, you need true freedom and true freedom is not just making a lot of money. Now, the fourth thing you need in order to become a high value man is some sort of adversity in your life. So either that adversity and hardship is forced on you, for example, with me having to support and take care of a single mother. That was really not the easiest thing to come to terms with at the age of eight or nine years old. And without going into too much detail here, just having a very difficult upbringing to deal with and just going through and seeing a lot of things that just made me very angry and upset at the world at a very young age. So there's certain adversity, there's certain challenges that just force certain people to step up. And the unfortunate thing is 80% of the time when men are put through that, they don't step up. They don't pull up their boots and become the person they need to become to face the challenges. And that's just the unfortunate nature of the world. But you simply cannot be a high value man without putting yourself through the fire. I want you to wake up every single morning, look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, honestly, would I follow this man into war? Stare in the mirror and be honest with yourself. What do you see? Now, I know some of you guys are looking at this and going, okay, well, I come from a middle class family or maybe even a wealthy family, or you may have just generally had a very cushy life in general. Well, that's fine as long as you force adversity and hardship on yourself. So whether that be small things, I remember even me when I was 15, 16, I used to do a bunch of cold approach. And you know, I used to it taught me a lot about how the world works. And as men, we all know that anxiety of like looking at a girl and being like, do I speak to her? Do I talk to her? All that stuff. So I did a lot of that growing up. And I think even that adversity shaped a lot of who I am today. I will never ever look at a girl three times. The first time I might look and acknowledge, oh, wow, that's, you know, that's a very beautiful girl. The second time I might look over again. And at that point, I have to either make the decision, am I going to be man enough that night or that day to go up? and say something and say hi and introduce myself? Or am I not going to do it? But at least it's a skill that I don't think is necessarily too effective for the main goals that most guys want. But it is a skill that's very incredible and teaches you a lot about adversity and difficulty. So whether that's learning cold approach, whether that's running a marathon, I had a very difficult summer of 2020 where I had crippling anxiety attacks. And by the way, you know, I'm a person that I've been meditating for the longest time ever. I would sit and I would meditate. I'm like, oh, I can just meditate away. No, it never went away. And the only thing I could think about for three weeks straight from morning to night was how I was going to delete myself. And there's a big difference between thinking about it and thinking about how you're going to do it. Once you start getting into the, hey, how am I going to do it? That's a very different level of severity. Um, like over the past two, three weeks, I just I keep waking up with this crippling, crippling anxiety. And, um, <sighs> I just don't feel like myself. The reason I say that is because I made the decision. I am going to run a marathon in two weeks with no preparation. I'd never run more than eight kilometers in my entire life. And I made the decision that in 14 days, I'm going to run 42 kilometers with no training on a cold, rainy day in London in December with no flat roads or perfect route or anything. I felt like after the summer of 2020, after you know, having a very difficult summer, I felt like 
I had nothing left. I didn't believe in me. I didn't believe in my powers. I didn't believe in how strong I was. So I had to put myself through something difficult to go. You can get through anything. If you can get through that, you can get through anything. So if you grew up with an amazing, loving families without too many difficulties, there's absolutely nothing wrong. That's beautiful. It's amazing you had that experience. It's amazing that you had a good reference for what a good childhood is, but you have to put yourself through the fire. You have to find a way. And it's funny, after I ran my marathon in 2021 and 2022, I had my two biggest years when it comes to every aspect of my life. I really leveled up the last two years, but now I feel like I'm starting to get a little soft again, which is why next year I'm dedicating myself to boxing, to really committing to the craft, to getting punched in the face over and over and over and putting myself through that adversity. So that way, the year after I can have my first proper fight. Just remember that a man that has never been through hardship can never truly be a man that women respect or follow into war. Now, the last thing that you need in order to become a high value man is a strong network. And out of all the things that I listed, I'd say this is the least important and the last piece of the puzzle. You know, a lot of people obsess about networking in their first few years of starting this journey. For me, it was the opposite. I just put my head down, put my head down, and I'm like, I am gonna become an incredible man. I'm gonna work on myself. I'm gonna do it for more than a decade. And when I pop my head up, the people that I used to look up to or respect, rather than me trying to network with them, they're gonna reach out to me or we're gonna get introduced as peers, as equals. And that is exactly what has happened the last two years. So that's why I'm saying, I believe that this is the fifth and last step of this puzzle, but it is extremely important to have a strong network in your corner. You know, there's a lot of things that money alone simply cannot fix. You need a network. You need a problem solver in your corner. You need people who can protect you, your loved ones, and you need people who can get their hands dirty if need be. You see, there is not a single problem that's been presented to me in the last year or two years that I have not been able to fix myself or through my direct network. And let me tell you, you will earn the respect of both men and women if you are that person, if you have that sort of influence, that sort of power, that sort of status, that sort of pull. I mean, even the other day, there was a specific thing that one of my good friends, Hamza, needed help with. Within a few hours, I had taken care of it and he'd sent me this message. As I said, the world can be very cruel. So once you start winning, you need a network. You know, it's another level to be able to get someone's documents pushed through because you have that level of power in a specific country. It's another level of power to be able to ban someone from a specific venue or specific chain of restaurants because the owner owes you a favor. And it's another level of power when you have people in your corner that make sure that if anyone messes with you or your loved ones, they will face swift and aggressive consequences. And by the way, I don't know what any of this is like. I'm just hypothetically imagining. So anyways, this fifth point is really just the cherry on top. You need to address the first four points and then you can really get onto this fifth point and really become someone that's powerful, influential, and whatever the problem is, either you or the problem solvers in your corner that work directly for you, that owe you favors, they will make sure it's taken care of swiftly and professionally. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the five ways how you become a high value man. You don't become a high value man by you know making a bunch of money and buying a Lambo and then going to the club and popping bottles. And by the way, all that stuff is okay. You know, maybe seven, eight times a year, I go to a club and I just spend money with a bunch of my friends just because why not? We can. And I buy a bunch of expensive stuff and I live a great life, but I don't think that makes me the man. It's the five things that I talked about here that really makes you a top 1% man. Now, these are the five things, but in order to accomplish them, you need good habits. So that's why I want you to watch this video next, which are the three habits that made me a millionaire at the age of 18. Go check that out and I will see you guys in the next video.